My name is Innocent Mapanda. I hope I find you well. Uh, in today's lesson, we're going to touch on linear programming part two. Uh, the difference between this uh, question and the one that we did in the first episode is the graph is already drawn, uh, inequality is presented already, shaded to identify the region R. So, here the examiner is asking you to write down the four inequalities that define the region R. So, our task here is to calculate or to find the inequalities that were used to produce the unshaded regions as well as uh, to identify the region R. Right. So, I'm going to start with the vertical and horizontal lines. Right. So, to start with, uh, we have this first line, this vertical line here. Uh, which is passing through the value of x, which is close to 2, right? So we are going to attack this in two stages. The first stage is to identify the equation of the line, right? Then the next stage is to remove the equation sign or the equal sign with the inequality sign that supports the position of R, right? So if we look uh, at this vertical line, you can notice that R is appearing on the right side, right? So the position of R is the right side, right? So if the line is vertical, the right side is the greater side. I hope you are listening. The right side is the greater side, right? So the first thing to do is to write the name of the equation of the line. X uh, is equals to 2. X is equals to 2 is the name or the equation of the line, right? Then I now need to remove this equal sign and replace it with the inequality sign which supports the position of R, right? Like what I told you before, that R is on the right side and the right side means greater. So it means that X is greater than or equal to 2. Why am I using or equal to? Because the line is solid. So, you are warm and dry, and this is your final answer. I hope you are listening, class. Right. Then we move on to uh, inequality number two. This line is horizontal, which is passing through three. Since it is passing through between two and four, it means that this is three. Right. But the three that is being cut is the three on the y-axis. Therefore, the equation of the line is y is equals to 3, since we are cutting the value of y, right? So, inequality is determined by the position of R, right? So, if we look at this horizontal line, we can notice that R is above the line. Above means greater, right? So, I'm going to use the greater sign, but with or equal to, since the line is solid. So, y is greater than or equal to 3. This is the second solution. I hope you are following. Right. Then we move on to the third inequality. Right. This line is passing through 7, which is between 6 and 8. Right. But the 7 is the value on the y-axis. Therefore, I'm going to write y uh, is equal to 7, which is the equation of the line. Right. But inequality is determined by the position of R, where R is located. So looking at this line, you can notice that R is below the line. Below the line means lesser. But since the line is solid, I'm going to use or equal to. So Y is less than or equal to 7, which is the third inequality. Right. Then we move on to the fourth inequality. The fourth inequality is going to be determined by this uh, dotted line, uh, which is a slope, right? So for lines with a slope, we make use of the equation form of the straight line, which is y is equals to uh, mx, y is equals to mx plus c, right? I hope you are following class, right? C is the y-intercept, or the value of y when x is equal to zero. And M denotes the gradient of the line, right? So for you to find M, 
for you to find M, you have to identify two points which are lying uh, on that line, right? So, two points of your choice, you are not limited. Any two points, as long as they are lying on that line, they can assist you to find the gradient, right? So, here, the first point is here. This point is aligned to the value of x, which is 4, which is also aligned to the value of x, which is 8. So, this point uh, is 4 for x uh, and 8 for y, right? We now need uh, the second point, right? Uh, I can use this one. This point is between 8 and 10, so the value of x is 9, and it is aligned to the value of y, which is 3, between 2 and 4, so it means that y is equal to 3. So I have uh, 9 and 3 like this. Right, so m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, so let me say x1 for 4 and y1 for 8. Then x2 for y, uh, x2 for 9, and y2 for 3, like this. I hope you are listening. So we are now substituting this in the gradient formula. So m is equal to y2 is 3, then y1 is 8, then x2, x2 is 9, minus x1, x1 is 4. Right? 3 minus 8, you get minus 5. Then 9 minus 4, you get 5, giving you negative 1 as your gradient. I hope you are listening. So I am substituting minus 1 on M, right? So you get uh, Y is equal to minus 1X plus C. So for the equation of the line to be complete, we now need the value of C, right? So, the value of C was going to be easy if the line was cutting the y-axis. But the line is not cutting the y-axis on the given graph. So, we are going to find C using the skill of substitution. Right. So, you have to choose any point of your choice, of the two points that we have used, any point of your choice, like we can use 4 and 8. So, on Y, you have to substitute 8. Then on x, you have to substitute 4, which is the corresponding value of x when y is 8. Then plus c like this. So you come out with 8 is equal to minus 4 plus c. Then you move minus 4 to the left side. You get plus 4, which is equal to 8 plus 4, which is equal to c. 8 plus 4, it gives you 12. Hence, 12 is equal to c. So the complete equation of the line is y is equals to uh, minus 1x, which is good as minus x, plus c, where c is equals to 12 using the skill of substitution. Right. So we are now left with the inequality. The inequality sign is determined by the position of, of r. Right. So if we look at this dotted line, we can notice that r is below this line. Hence, we are going to use the lesser sign. And this time around, we are going to use the lesser sign without putting or equal to. Why? Because this is a broken line. Right. So I am going to write y is less than minus x plus 12, which is the uh, fourth inequality. So you are home and dry. So you are now writing your answers. Right. The first solution is x greater than or equal to 2. This one. Then the second solution is y uh, greater than or equal to 3, which is this. Then the third solution is y less than or equal to 7. Then the fourth inequality is the y less than minus x plus 12. So I'm going to write y less than minus x plus 12. Then you get yourself 5 marks. So this is how you present your answers. So I want you to stay tuned as we move on to the next question. Right, welcome back to question number two. Right, in this question we are given three uh, lines, three straight lines that are slant. Right, 
no vertical, no horizontal line. All the three lines are slant. It means that all the three lines we are going to make use of the skill y is equal to mx plus c. So I'm going to start with this line below, right? Which is passing through the value of y at 2 and the value of x at 8, right? So let me start by writing the points, right? 0, 2, this is 0, 2, and it is passing at 8, so we also have 8, 8, 0. But you can even choose even a point in between uh, this point and this point. As long as the point is lying on the straight line, you still produce the same answer, right? Right, so y is equal to mx plus c is the equation of the line, right? So C is very easy to identify since the straight line is cutting y axis at y is equal to 2. So the value, right, on the y axis being cut by the straight line is the y intercept. It means that C is equal to 2. I hope you are listening. What I'm trying to say is if you have y axis, right, and this is your x axis, right, and this is your set line, right? The value at the point of intersection between the y-axis and the straight line is what I refer to as C, which is the y-intercept. So in this case, the line is cutting y-axis at 2. That's why I have written C is equal to 2. Easy to identify, right? Then M is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I hope you are listening, right? So, 0 is x1, 2 is y1. 8 is x2, then 0 is y2. I'm now substituting in my formula, right? So, m is equals to y2 is 0 minus y1 is 2. Then x2 is, four, is 8, then x1 is 0. So, 0 minus 2, you get minus 2. 8 minus 0, get 8. Reducing it as a fraction in this change, dividing by 2, you get negative 1 quarter. I hope you are listening. Right. So, the complete equation of this straight line is y is equal to negative 1 quarter on m. Then I put x in front plus 2, where 2 is the y-intercept representing c. Right. So this is the first thing to do to identify the equation of the line. So after identifying the equation of the line, you then need to remove this equation sign or the inequality sign and replace it. This equation line or the equal sign is going to be replaced by an inequality sign which represents the position of R. Right. So if we look at this line, you can notice that R is above. R is above this line. Above means greater. So I'm going to make use of y is greater than or equal to. Why? Because the line is solid. But if the line was a broken line, I was going to make use of a greater sign without or equal to. But since the line is solid, I'm using greater than or equal to. Then you put minus 1 quarter x plus 2 like this. Then this is your, this is your final answer. Right, I hope you are listening class. So I want you to stay tuned as we move on to the next inequality. Right? We are now uh, moving on to the second inequality of the same question. Right? So we are done with this line below. Right? So let me now look at this line which is passing through the origin as well as 5, 5. Right? So let me start by writing the two points which are lying on that straight line. So the first point is the origin, uh, which is 0, 0 at this point. Then the next point is 5, 5. So I'm going to write 5, 5. I identify the two points lying on the uh, straight line first. Right. Then after that, I'm going to write the form of the equation of straight line, which is y is equal to mx plus c like this. I hope you are listening. So what is c? If you are following, c is the y-intercept or the value at which the straight line cuts the y-axis. 
right? So you can notice that this straight line is cutting the y-axis at zero, right? It means that c is close to zero. I hope you are following, right? So we now need to find m, which is the gradient of the line, right? So m, right, is equals to y2 minus y1, right, over x2 minus x1. I hope you are listening. So, this is x1 and this is y1, and we have x2 and this is y2. I hope you are listening. So, I'm now substituting. On y2, I'm going to put 5. On y1, I'm going to put 0. x2 is 5. x1 is 0. 5 minus 0, you get 5. 5 minus 0, you get 5. 5 divided by 5, it means that m is close to 1. So it means that y is equal to 1x for m plus 0 for c, which can be written as y is equal to x. Since 1x is good as x, and 0 can be ignored. I hope you are listening. right? So for you to then give or present the final answer, we now need to get rid of this equation sign and replace it with the inequality sign which supports the position of r. So if we look at this line, right, you can notice that r is below. r is below this line. Below means you are going to use an inequality with a lesser. Right. But the nature of the line is solid. So it means that we are using less than or equal to x. And this is your final answer. I hope you are listening. Right. Then we are now moving on to the third inequality. The third inequality is passing through this point. This point is 8 for x and 0 for y. It is also passing through this point 5, 5. So 8, 0 and 5, 5 are the two points lying on this third straight line. So, y is equal to mx plus c is the form. But this time around, it is difficult to identify c on the graph since the line is not cutting the y-axis on the given graph. So, we are going to make use of the skill of substitution. It means that you are going to find the gradient of the line first before you can identify c. Right. So, the gradient of the line m is equal to y2 minus y1, x2, minus x1. Right. So I'm going to put x1 on 8, y1 on 0, x2 on 5, y2 on 5 like this. Then I'm substituting. 5 minus y1 is 0, it's 5 minus 0. Then x2 is 5, x1 is 8, so it's 5 minus 8. 5 minus 0, you get 5. Then 5 minus 8, you get minus 3. It means that minus 5, minus 5 over 3 is the gradient. Right. So let me then substitute on M. Right. So Y is equals to minus 5 over 3, X plus C. Right. So to find C, you have to choose a point of your choice. We can choose 8, 0. So it means that I'm going to substitute 0 on y. Then minus 5 over 3. Then I'm going to put 8 on, on x plus c like this. I hope you are listening. Right, welcome back. Right, the last uh, line to consider here is passing through this point, which is 8 at x. So we have... 8, 0 is the first point uh, which is part of this line. It is also uh, passing through 5, 5. So 5, 5 can also be used to calculate the equation of, of this line. Right. I hope you are listening. Right. So let 8 be x1. Let 0 be y1. Let 5 be x2. And this 5 be y2. Right. Y is equals to m x plus c right so this line right 
is not cutting y-axis on the given graph. So it is difficult for you to easily notice the value of c. But we can determine the value of c using the skew of substitution, right? But it is now a different situation from the previous two lines that we have dealt with. The first line you could notice that c was 2. The second line you could notice that c was 0. Because c is the value on the y-axis, right? At the point of intersection between the line and the y-axis, right? So, if you can notice that uh, this line, right, is not cutting the y-axis on the given graph, the point of intersection between this line and y-axis is not part of this graph, though they are going to meet somewhere, somewhere, right? So, do not worry. We are going to find y using another method, which is substitution, right? So, let me start by identifying m, the gradient. m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So on y2, I'm going to put 5. This is y2. y1 is 0. x2 is 5. Then x1 is 8. Right. 5 minus 0, you get 5. Then 5 minus 8, you get minus 3. So 5 over minus 3 is m, which is your gradient. So I am now substituting uh, 5 over minus 3 on m. You get y is equals to minus... Uh, 5 over 3x, right, plus c, which is yet to be calculated. So to then find c in a situation where the line is not cutting the y-axis on the given graph, you use the skill of substitution. Of the two points that you have used to find or to calculate the gradient, you have to choose any point of your choice. Let us choose 8, 0. So if you choose 8, 0, it means that on y, you are going to put 0, right? Then on x, you are going to put 8, then plus c, right? So 8 is going to multiply negative 5, which is your numerator, giving you minus 40 over 3 plus c. To make c the subject of the formula, right? It is now a matter of moving or shifting minus 40 over 3 to your left side. So, a term which crosses over the equal sign, it mutates its original sign. So, this negative is going to become a positive sign. So, 40 over 3 is equal to C. So, this is how you identify C. If the graph, right, is not giving the point of intersection between the line and the y-axis, you make use of the skill of substitution. I hope you are enjoying the lesson. Right. So, let me then now substitute uh, 40 over 3 on M, right? And uh, 40 over 3 is the value of C. So, 40 over 3 is going to be substituted on C. Then, 5 over minus 3 is going to be substituted on M. So, we are going to get uh, Y is equal to minus 5 over 3X plus 40 over 3. So, 40 over 3, I have placed it on C. Then, minus 5 over 3, which is the gradient I have placed it on M. This is the equation of the line. So what is left now is to remove this equation sign, this equal sign, and replace it with an inequality sign that supports the position of R. So R is the one which is going to determine the inequality sign. So if we look at this line, right, that we are dealing with, you can notice that the position of R is below that line. So it means someone must use an inequality with a lesser, right? But this line is solid. So we are going to consider less than or equal to as our inequality, right? So Y is less than or equal to minus 5 over 3X plus 4 over 3. And this is your final answer. I hope you are listening class. So we are now presenting our answers, right? So y is less than or equal to x is the answer. Uh, y is less than or equal to minus 5 over 3x plus 40 over 3 is the second one. 
Then uh, in our pre previous uh, or the first working, we produced y is greater than or equal to minus one quarter x plus two. So let me put it here. Y uh, is greater than or equal to minus one quarter x uh, plus two. So these are the required three inequalities and you will be given uh, five marks for that. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. So this brings uh, to the end of today's episode. Uh, thank you uh, for spending your time uh, watching uh, on my tutorial, right? For you not to miss new videos, I advise you to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that whenever I post new material, you will be notified quickly, right? So kindly subscribe to my channel, share it to as many people as possible so that a uh, majority of all level students that are writing this year internationally may also benefit from my tutorials. Till we meet again, Shalom.